Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And a little bit ago, I posted a video talking about this guy, my first PC I've ever built. Uh, it was a lot of fun. However, I condensed that video down into a very shorter video, very short video. And I did film the entire process. And a lot of you commented and said that you want to see the process. And I messed up a few times as well. It was a whole process. So this video is going to show everything that I did to put this together. And this video is going to be fairly long, so a little unorthodox of my channel, but it seemed like you guys wanted it. So all of this stuff went into here. Uh, like I said, ran into some problems, all that. Of course, uh, it was my first build, so it was a bit of a project. Uh, but anyways, let's get into it. I'm going to go through the entire process of building my first computer. To begin, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the NZXT case I have right here. And I love the blue and black accents. Definitely just perfect for the build I'm about to do. Um, and you'll see here up at the top, you have your USB slots, microphone, headphone as well, power button, and then the front just has an enclosure. And the other side is just going to be the back, just some more accents. And then flipping it over, we do have the back, which has some fans, uh, some openings for your power supply, your hard drives, and then of course some cable management help. So let's take the case apart. I'm gonna begin with the outside screws. So the first panel just slides right off. It does have some cushioning on the inside. And you'll see the second panel should be just as easy. You just slide it on back once you have the screws off and this piece comes off. Now I'm gonna hold off on peeling off this plastic just to kind of protect the, the covering. And you'll wait till the end, uh, I'll wait till the end to actually peel this off. So looking at the back of the case where all the wiring will go as you can already see, you also have an opening for the motherboard where your PC, uh, where you can install the back plate on the motherboard for your CPU cooler. Um, and then go ahead and flip this over to the front piece should come off. And I think the top one does as well. I'll get to that in a second. And then of course, here is the other view where you will actually have the clear view into the PC. So to take this off, the manual says to just kinda, it should just pop out from the bottom here and it did. So that was actually fairly easy. Uh, it has some padding as well here. Looks like it does have some vents for all of these fans, which are magnetic, it looks like. So they just kind of pop on there with magnets. Nice little touch there. Then the manual says to get the top piece off. You just kind of peel from this side here. Looks like I had to give a little bit of force, but it did come off. So fairly simple to actually take apart the case. So now I just flipped the NZXT case on the sides because I'm going to install the motherboard down like this, we'll do that in just a second. And then you'll see over here, I have my power supply right here, plugged in, not turned on, so I can ground myself. And then you'll see the EVGA power supply came with tons of cables. I'm guessing more than I'll even need, but uh, we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and grab our motherboard. So here's a look at the motherboard, the MSI Z720 Gaming Pro Carbon. As you can see by the manual, came inside the box with some cables and looks like a back plate as well. We're gonna set that to the side for now, uh, but right now we wanna go ahead and install the motherboard. Forgot to mention that inside that case was a little package that includes some further pieces needed to actually install things into the case. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our motherboard. Pretty easy to tell what orientation to put it in based on the place holding screws that are there. And then of course, just knowing that these ports are gonna to go towards the back of your case. So I'm gonna carefully go ahead and put this case in there and align it with those screws. So this middle screw kind of is a little bit raised. So that's kind of what's gonna hold it in place. Well, we can go ahead and screw all four of these in because it actually came with these screws. So I was just kidding. I'm actually using the screws that the case, that NZXT provided. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put them in place with my hand before I grab a screwdriver. All right, and finishing up the last screw, our motherboard is now installed. Let's go ahead and grab our Intel processor. So first of all, on the motherboard, you need to unlatch this piece and then go ahead and I believe take off this black piece. Yeah, it just says hold on to this. So we're gonna set this to the side for now, but now we're ready to actually install our processor right down there. So here's a look at the processor inside the plastic at the moment, but I want you to take a look at the corner right here and you'll see a little arrow that's right there. So now, when we take a look at the slot for the motherboard, that arrow is going to align with that bottom left-hand corner where that mark is. So here we go to install it. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
slide it on in and make sure it is secure. So you give it a little jiggle left and right, not too much, um, but it is completely secure. So now what we can do is go ahead and slide this plate back down. And you'll see, just make sure it isn't pressing down on that process or anything. But now we're gonna need to actually give it a little pressure, put some force behind it and lock this in place. So now our processor is installed. So let's go ahead and install that power supply. So on the back of the case, I'm gonna unscrew this bracket and actually just connect the bracket onto the back of the power supply. So easy enough, just mounted the bracket with the screws that were included by the case onto the power supply and then those four are going to actually connect. So I should be able to slide this down and those screws are definitely tight enough, not over tightened, but definitely snug where I know the power supply is not just gonna fall in. So I'm just gonna tighten these four screws. And there we have it, our power supply is now fully installed. I'm also just realizing that this back plate needed to go in before the motherboard. So now I'm gonna to have to unscrew the motherboard real quick, pop this back plate in, and then re-screw those back in. I'll be right back. So now it's about time for me to try out the liquid cooling with the NZXT Kraken X62. And I'm gonna go ahead and top mount this radiator and everything up top and then figure out where all these wires are gonna be going. And I think it's gonna be a bit of a challenge for me. So let's go ahead and try it out. So first, let's go ahead and put on the back plate. It should be fairly easy, just kind of slide it into the preset holes. I do have an Intel processor, so I grab the Intel back plate. So now that our back plate's installed, there are now four holes to put these guys in. These are our standoffs, and you'll see they're about the same, they are the same uh, size on either side, so it doesn't matter which way I screw it in. So now we got our radiator and some fans. I'm gonna connect the two. I'm gonna make sure I have air blowing into the radiator to cool it down. And also, I'm trying to figure out, I'm gonna place this on the top of my case. I wanna make sure the cable is running towards the back of the motherboard. So when I put it up top, that's where the cable goes so I can plug it in and it kind of be a little bit more hidden so it's not coming across the motherboard and it just doesn't look that good. So now I'm gonna line up all these screws and screw together the fans onto the radiator. Okay, so I screwed the fans to this radiator. Let's go ahead and connect the radiator to the top space in my case. So real quick, I had to flip the fans because of the orientation that you put the radiator and water cooler in and you'll see so now what I'm going to do is hold it this way and actually just kind of slide it up into the top of the case and line it up there's actually some holes on top of this case that should line up very easily with the radiator and they are lined up now so when they're lined up I'm going to go ahead and screw the radiator into the top all right I have everything mounted up at the top very securely with some screws and then you'll see the fans are right down here pushing air into that radiator now we have this guy just chilling here. So we need to go ahead and install it. I do have the plastic still on, but basically you're going to set it on top of the processor with those mounting screws that we had already previously installed and kind of screw it in. So line everything on up. And then once you have every, all the screws lined up and it looks like I do, I'm gonna go ahead and press in just a little bit of pressure. And then of course, grab these guys, these screws that were included, and just kind of screw them on top like so, just tight enough, not too tight. I don't even think I'm gonna use a screwdriver, probably just with my hand, it's just pretty tight and firm. So all done, all four screws in. Now we're gonna grab the cables and connect it in the correct spots. So as you can see, I have both cables connected to the top of this pump. Now is going to be the tricky part, what I'm gonna need some help with is figuring out how to wire this all. So I believe this is a USB 2.0 slot from the top of the pump, and then I have this connecting to the SATA uh, power cable and these um, in different spots. So we're gonna figure this out and get it all connected. All right, so I went ahead and routed all of the cables out to the back, and you'll see that CPU fan slot on the motherboard right here. That actually is a piece that I connected. So now on the back where I routed all the cables, here is a cable from the pump itself, and then here are the two fan cables which you're just going to connect to the first and second connector uh, it should be easy enough fans are all connected and good to go so i went ahead and plugged another cable into that power supply and then of course i grabbed my sata cable from that kraken unit because i want to plug that into the power supply because it's going to need power and you should be able to just kind of slide this in and it connects and sticking with the cable since we're on the back i'm going to this front panel has usb slots speakers, all that good stuff, and this wiring is coming to the back here. And you see it has it in plastic at the moment uh, out of the case. Now let's go ahead and start plugging some of these into the motherboard. So I figured out where on the motherboard these were supposed to connect, and I realized I have to feed them through the back right here. 
aside from the USB 3.0 and 2.0 cables are going to be going to be fed in just a different location based on where the connection is just to reduce wiring on the front. And obviously refer to your motherboard manual on where to plug these in. You'll see I do have a power switch reset switch, some LEDs, and you'll also need to re recognize which one's the positive side, which one's the negative side. If it has a little arrow that indicates the, po the positive side. So it was a little tricky, but got everything connected. There's the HD audio slot. There's some of the front panel connectors, also USB 2.0 slot. Uh, and like I said, just follow the motherboard's uh, instructions. And then all the way right here is that USB 3.0 slot that I fed through the back there. So now it's some time to install the SSD that I have. And I will upgrade in the future and add some hard drives in the bays here. Uh, but you'll see I have a Kingston 480 gig SSD that'll hold me down for the time being, I will need to upgrade, but I will do that in a future video. But anyways, I wanna go ahead and grab the SSD and you'll see this tray just kind of pops out and we're gonna screw this tray into the SSD and then just kind of clip this back in. So you'll see I've got the bracket installed on the Kingston SSD. And now all I really would need to do is just clip it back in like so and then grab my screw and screw it in. I'm gonna hold off on doing that for now because I wanna connect the cables first and feed them through before I uh, secure this down. So the motherboard came with the cable to connect to our SSD. And it looks like on the motherboard, the correct slots, there's two of them right down there, should be easy enough to connect. And then of course, I'll have to connect at the end to my power supply. So realistically, I realize I'm gonna have to start plugging things into the power supply, which I've already plugged in. Normally, you'd probably wanna connect everything into the power supply before you even dock it, but I didn't do that and you'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the motherboard first and connect it to uh, my power supply. So now that it's plugged in, I'm gonna find the correct slot to feed it through so I know uh, where that motherboard adapter is. And of course the back looks super messy. I'll clean that up at the end of this video. So figure out what way it goes, align everything, and it should just snap right in, slides right in, and there we go. So it did slide right in. All right, next we have the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 graphics card to install. Pretty excited to try this guy out. And of course you need to consult your manual on which slot to actually put this in. And then of course I'm gonna have to take off a couple of these brackets, maybe one or two on the left side here, just unscrew them and pop them out. And I, then you just go ahead and snap in the graphics card. All right, so here we go. Hold this securely and we can go ahead. I took off two of the brackets, so it should slide right in and pop into our PCIe slot. So I took off the right number of slots, but just the wrong one. So I had to take off another one and also just make sure these clips are back because they will snap forward when you snap in your graphics card. So once you have it lined up, just kind of give it a press down and it should snap right into your motherboard and mine did just fine. And now what you're gonna need to do is I believe probably grab one of these screws and just kind of screw it in just to kind of keep it secure. All right, we are all done, all secure the graphics card. So when you look on the back, of the casing, you actually will see, let's see if that is focusing in, no it's not, there we go. So on the back with the graphics card, you have all your slots, DVI, HDMI, all that good stuff. So our graphics card is going to need some power, so we need to plug in a cable from the power supply. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in and then route this to the back of the power supply. So we're plugged in, good to go. I just need to kind of figure out if I wanna wire it so it goes down this way or wire it so it goes down this way. So that's just kind of a personal preference. So before I continue any further, I'd like to add, I will be doing a video about upgrading this PC. So I'm going to add some lighting. You'll see here, I got some NZXT RGB fans. I'll be putting those in the build and also the Hue Plus advanced PC lighting as well. And some other things, including probably a hard drive, maybe an extra SSD, we'll see. But I will be doing an updated video, so stay tuned for that on upgrading this desktop. And we are nearing the end of our build. I'm getting really excited. We do have some RAM to put in. You'll see I have two packages. This one is going to go into my build. You'll see here the DDR4 16 gig kit, the Ballistic Sport gaming memory. I'm gonna set that to the side because that's about to go in here, but I am giving away this kit right here, the DDR3 kit. 16 gigs ballistic sport from ballistics um so huge shout out to them for setting this for giveaway uh i will post a link in the description probably use a gleam um form to pick a winner so let's go ahead and uh fill out that form and enter to win if you'd like to win some ram installing ram is very simple all you need to do is make note of this little notch 
that's at the bottom and line it up with the notch in the slot on your motherboard. Also, you'll need to consult the manual of your motherboard to figure out which slots you need to use. Obviously, you're gonna use all four slots if you have four sticks of RAM, but I only have two and you need to use, I believe it's the far right one and the third one, so you skip one. Now I'm gonna consult the manual and clip these in. So for our RAM, we will use this far right one, so make sure you unhook these clips. There's one on each side, so like so, you just unhook it, and just like when we put in that graphics card, the clip should snap in. Now when you install the RAM, just make sure you line up that slot with the slot on the motherboard and once you line it up, you can just give it a nice press down on one side clipped in on the other, and that will clip in as well. So once you hear those two clips click, you're good to go. And then finally to clip in the last stick of RAM, exact same process, just line up the slot, press in with a click, press in with a click. Also, make sure you do connect on the motherboard, your processor power. I forgot to do that actually, and you'll see at the end of the video what, ha what happens if you don't actually plug this in. So make sure you do plug this in and plug it over into your power supply, and you should be good to go with your processor. So I also wanna mention this back here is what controls your case fans. So this bottom cable is what you're going to need to actually plug into your power supply. And the power supply actually came with the correct cable, so nothing to worry about there. But just make sure that the bottom cable here is plugged into your power supply. And also this cable here for me, I had to plug into my motherboard, just a system fan slot. I believe there's three or four of them on this motherboard. Now let's just go ahead and piece this case together. Also wanna to make note on the left here, obviously I'm going to need some peripherals. Got some Razer ones right here. I'm gonna open those up after I'm done with this build and power on this computer as well. All right, so I got a little ahead of myself. We will need to deal with these cables right here and I'm not too worried about them being completely uniform. There's a lot of space down here that I can just kind of shove some of the cables. All right, so all done. Really didn't do too much. Just kind of shoved a lot underneath here. I'm not too worried about this side because I really am not going to look at it. So it's just kind of a personal preference if you really need this side to be super uniform. Now you'll see what I mean. This back panel goes on and you don't see any of the, any of those cables going on. So really no big deal for me to have this a little bit messy. Now before I close this up, I wanna make sure that I peel off these plastic stickers. There we go, got a nice NZXT logo. I believe it lights up as well. Uh, just because it gets really warm, your graphics card might have one too. Um, I don't think mine does. So we're all set. And as I promised, I would peel these off right at the end. And so here's the inside of the back panel, all clear. So reconnecting this front panel now is going to be very easy. You see, you just push everything in, it slides on. Now we're just going to need some screws and I can peel off this final plastic. All right, screws are all in, the case is now secured. Final step, peel this guy off. And there we have it. There is the build, all finished. Hopefully everything works. I hope I don't have to take this piece back off and mess with it. Now I am considering changing the location of the, the Kraken water cooler. So we'll see if you guys have recommendations on how I can change this. That's kind of what I'm looking for, ways to make this a little more uniform, look a little bit better, uh, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power supply and we're gonna test this guy out. All right, so we are about to have the moment of truth. You'll see I have a monitor right here. This monitor is very old. It will get an update very soon. Expect the video on the new monitor that I get to come in the near future. This is just a placeholder. I've had this monitor for over six years now. So definitely time for an upgrade. And then of course I'll set these out in just a second. But now let's go back to our PC and I'm gonna press the power button. Here we go. Hopefully it lights up. Oh man. Awesome, that was a great feeling seeing those lights go on. It's making a little bit of noise, it's really not that loud. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check everything out and make sure we have everything good to go. So a little unfortunate, but we do have a debug LED on on the motherboard and it actually is signaling the processor. So it looks like we're gonna have to take off the water cooler real quick and check out the processor. Okay, so please make fun of me because I definitely deserve it because my problem was that I didn't plug in the CPU power cable, which is right up here in that upper left-hand corner. So I did not plug that in. Also, as a measure, precautionary measure, I only plugged in one stick of RAM into the slot that it says to plug in first. So this is a slot that only one stick of RAM 
is supposed to go in. Let's go ahead and turn on the PC. All right, I'm very excited. I think this one's gonna work, hopefully. Um, we do have a DVI cable now plugged into my graphics card, plugged into my monitor, which is turned on. Like I said, only one stick of RAM at the moment, but I just wanna test it out, make sure that it boots up. It should boot to, I think, an option to install Windows or a different operating system, but I'm gonna press the power button. Looks like everything is going well. No easy debug LEDs on. Then I believe my monitor should have some text to it. I don't think it should go in the BIOS because I do have an SSD plugged in to my computer. And there we go. So looking on over, moving the camera up top. Sorry about all the lights, but it says reboot or select proper boot device. So we can go ahead and install our operating system. I'm super pumped. So interestingly enough, it's supposed to be in the second and fourth slot for the RAM. However, I could only get it to boot when I had the second slot of RAM in. However, I tried, both sticks worked. Uh, I tried every slot combination and I found that one and two work. I'm not sure if this is going to be a, an issue long term. I might just try and boot it with just one stick and get some input. Uh, but if you have any idea on why you'll see it boots with the two sticks and it does recognize both of them, as you can see, 16 uh, gigs up top. So next we need to go ahead and install our operating system. So I do have Windows loaded up on the USB flash drive here. And this is a uh, Kingston 64 gig one. And I realized I really needed this in my life, especially having a MacBook and other USB type C devices, but you'll see it has inputs for USB type A and USB type C in a flash drive. So you can quickly swap in from my MacBook into any other PC or just any other USB type C slot. So definitely, I'll link to this down below, but it's definitely come in handy. Let's go ahead and plug it in and boot from the USB flash drive. So we're now ready to get going. I've got Windows loading up. I will need to connect the mouse and keyboard just to get everything installed, of course but things are looking really good. I'm pretty excited. I've got a uh, Razer Lance head right here, mouse, and then I have the Black Widow Tournament Edition Chroma V2 from Razer as well. So we're gonna open these up. I also have a gaming mat, which I'm gonna open up, and then later on in the video, I'll show off this Kraken 7.1 headset as well. But first of all, I wanna open these two up and get them connected to install Windows. So here's the Razer Lance head. It is powered by Chroma, so we'll have some LEDs. It is also a gaming grade wireless mouse. So not only will I be able to game very easily with this mouse, as you can see pulling out of the package, but it's also wireless. So I should be able to move it around freely and not have to worry about any cables getting in the way. However, if you do want to go ahead and plug it in, it does include a cable, USB type A cable to plug into your mouse, but also here is that wireless dongle. Real quick, down at the bottom is where the power switch is, but also you can take this latch off and that dongle goes right in there. So it's very easy and portable. If we wanna go ahead and turn it on, you'll see it flips over to the green. And it already starts with those LEDs. Really cool that you can customize them. And now I can plug it in and continue on. Let's grab our keyboard. The Razer Black Widow is a mechanical gaming keyboard with those Razer green switches. It has a wrist rest and of course, with that Razer Chroma, you can customize the LEDs. So you could even sync it up with my mouse and just have it look really awesome. So we are going to do that at some point. But now let's go ahead and open it on up, get it all plugged in. So here's that wrist pad that does connect to the keyboard via magnets, which is really awesome that there's no clips that can break. It's just magnets and it stays on securely. And then here is that uh, braided cable that you connect to your keyboard. Braided, similar to that of that mouse that I just opened up, has a braided uh, cable if you'd like a wired connection. So now we got our keyboard and mouse all plugged in. You'll see the LEDs going on our keyboard. Really excited to get these all set up. But now also we do have a gaming pad which is extremely thin and also has some grip down at the bottom so it will not slide on you. So I can just go ahead and set it down to my liking. And of course you can pick it up and move it. It's not insanely grippy, but there we go. So it's very thin, almost feels flush with the desk. That's how thin it is. Uh, and it's going to work just fine. Our mouse is plugged in working, our keyboard's working. Let's keep going. I also just plugged in the ethernet cable into the back of my desktop. It's working fine, says connected, but I also wanna make note that I bought a separate adapter. I'll show that off in a little bit for more wireless uh, using Wi-Fi instead of being fully connected via ethernet. So finally, while Windows is still installing, let's check out the Razer Kraken 7.1 version two is the gun metal and you'll see it to say PC Mac with that Razer Chroma as well. So more custom customizable uh, LEDs and this is oval ear cushions uh, as well. So opening the box, you had some booklets that are over here, but also here is the headset. And right away, I notice how premium, not only looking, but feeling this is. There's a ton of cushion on the ears, 
And I'm really excited to try this out when I load up a game. Now you'll see here that uh, this is your mic, which can bend, it's very customizable. And then of course it just hides away back into the earpiece. And then of course you do have a braided USB type A cable right here to connect to your PC. All right, so we have Windows installed. The build looks great. I can go ahead and put on that outside casing, but you'll see moving on over, do you have the monitor connected? All, everything is good to go. Now you'll see the resolutions are um, not that great. So you can just jump into display settings and you'll see it's at 7, uh, 1024 by 768. You can go ahead and change that to 1440, which is what my monitor supports at the most. Keep changes, that, that was so snappy, quick. Wow, that looks much, much better as you can see. Going back off of that NVIDIA GTX 1070. And there we have it. So I'm very excited to say that this build is done. This is my first PC build. Again, more upgrades coming in a future video. Stay tuned for that. So that's just about everything I want to show off in my build video. More to come. I might benchmark it. I might run some gaming tests, all that good stuff. And of course that upgrade video. So be sure to drop some comments on some games to play, some things I can do to customize this and make it better. And that's pretty much everything. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making it. It was a little frustrating at times, but definitely ended up getting it. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Have a good day.